I'm Phil Sutton. I'm Vice President for Translational Sciences at Recce Pharmaceuticals Limited. I'm going to give an update on three projects that I worked on when I was group leader at Murdoch Children's Research Institute. Specifically, these related to bacterial sinusitis, Helicobacter pylori, and Mycobacterium obsessus. So bacterial sinusitis is a very prevalent health problem, which affects almost 29 million people in the US each year. This is a slide produced by a clear view, uh, but basically sinusitis is a mild infection or inflammation of the tissues that line the sinuses. This infection causes symptoms such as facial pain, congestion, nasal obstruction, and fever. And this highly prevalent condition can be treated by intranasal antibiotics, which provides rationale for the development of a novel antibiotic agent. <clears throat> There's a range of bacteria that can cause this condition. Uh, they're showing here an increase in frequency. There's others, but the most prevalent infection that can cause bacterial sinusitis is Streptococcus pneumoniae. There's a subset of patients that develop severe complications, such as high persistent fever, inflammation, and altered mental state. And immuno immunocompromised patients are at a higher risk for severe disease and can warrant immediate antibiotic therapy. So Clearview's interviews with key opinion leaders. Uh, identified that R327 could have strong utility in poorly managed recurrent patients. Physicians are enthusiastic about the intranasal route of administration, which has been shown to work for R327. Um, they found that the, maintain, the maintenance of activity with repeated use would be a benefit and also what was really important was R327's demonstration of its efficacy against a range of drug resistance pathogens. So we've done several experiments in mouse models to show efficacy of R327 against strep pneumonia, the common strain that causes sinusitis. The first one shown here was performed by an independent CRO. <clears throat> in this study, nasal cavities of mice were infected with strep pneumonia. Then the mice were anesthetized while treated with R327 via both the intranasal and intravenous routes. And these treatments significantly reduced nasal infection by strep pneumonia. So on the graph, the blue is intranasal treatment and the purple is intravenous and reduction is compared to the control in red here. And the reduction is similar to the positive control with azithromycin. In a second study, this was the one done at my institute MCRI we modified the protocol to improve it. The change that we did was we didn't anesthetize the mice. When you anesthetize mice, you increase the clearance of anything you put into the nose. So by not anesthetizing, you can increase the exposure of the bacteria to the compound that you're delivering. So in this study, mice were infected with a strep pneumonia. They were treated nasally twice daily for five days with R327. And importantly, the mice were not anesthetized. When we did it this way, we got significantly reduced nasal infection of their strep pneumonia, and we managed to eradicate infection in eight out of the 12 treated mice. And importantly, this was also superior to the positive control group that were treated with azithromycin. <clears throat> so the key findings so far is that R327 treatment by the nasal route can eradicate nasal strep pneumonia infection, the most common bacterial cause of sinusitis in mice. Also, a very interesting observation, uh, we have managed to successfully treat a patient who had a multi-drug resistant form of strep, uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa sinusitis. So this patient was treated under the TGA special access scheme category A, and the patient reported a substantial reduction in effective discharge with no side effects after three days treatment with R327 via a topical nasal spray. So these data, which are sufficient and compelling, we believe, to potentially start towards a phase one, two clinical trial. Moving on to H. pylori. The H. pylori is a gram negative bacterium. It infects during childhood and typically colonizes for life. An estimated half the world's population is infected, so it's an incredibly prevalent pathogen. The important feature of this infection is that it causes a chronic gastritis that is, that drives a number of pathologies. The key diseases caused by this are two types of cancer. There's a stomach adenocarcinoma, which is a major killer. There's a rarer cancer, gastric lymphoma, 
and the peptic ulcers, which comprise the gastric and duodenal ulcers. This infection can be treated with oral antibiotic cocktails, quite complicated treatments, which are typically a triple or quadruple therapy. And while the treatment can be effective in maybe 70, 80% of people, antibiotic resistance is a large and increasing problem. And it's getting so bad that recently the WHO listed H. pylori amongst the top 10 bacteria where new antibiotics are most urgently needed. So we did some studies exploring first the uh, efficacy of R435, an oral formulation against H. pylori strain in culture, and showed that R435 was very effective at killing H. pylori. We tested it against seven strains. Four of these were fresh clinical isolates, and three of them were lab strains. And pre pretty much on average, R435 was as effective at killing H. pylori as two antibiotics, metronidazole and clorithromycin, which are frontline antibiotics used for treating H. pylori infection. Moving on to mouse studies, we, we treated H. pylori infected mice with uh, R435, and we did get a significant effect. The infection was reduced, but it was only reduced by one or two logs. We did this on several occasions and got similar results. And this contrasted with treatment with positive control metronidazole, which did eradicate infection. So what we've, what a summary of these results tells us is that R435 is very good at killing H. pylori, but we don't think that the antibiotic is currently finding its way to the stomach with the formulation that we're working with. So we need to do more formulation work to improve the way it's delivered so we can get more of it to where the bacteria live so we can improve the killing. Mycobacterium abscessus is a member of the NTMs or non-tuberculous mycobacteria. Basically, NTMs are mycobacteria that cause chronic lung disease that aren't the mycobacterium that causes tuberculosis. These can cause a range of symptoms, including chronic cough, weight loss, fatigue, fever, night sweats, shortness of breath. And importantly, NTM lung disease is an awful indication with significant unmet need. There are a range of different NTMs, but we think the most important one to develop a new treatment for is M. abscessus. So the incidence of specific pathogens of the NTMs can vary by region, with M. abscessus most frequent in the West. And the, the reason for that is M. abscessus is a major, major pathogen in cystic fibrosis. And cystic fibrosis is the world's most common genetically inherited disease, which mostly afflicts Caucasians. Now, Clearview's um, interviews with key opinion leaders have perceived significant unmet need for novel agents, agents that could be met by R327. In particular, starting at the bottom here on the left with increasing need, they believe that new treatments should be more efficacious and convenient. There should be um, therapeutic regimens which are safer and more tolerable. And also the novel therapies should have short treatment courses because currently the treatment courses can be incredibly long, even up to one or two years to treat so the current treatments that are given tend to be very toxic and very long. And if I can draw attention to the bottom right, there's a quote here. If a patient has M. abscessus, they're fortunate if they get any improvement and there's sometimes potentially permanent damage. So with this in mind, we've been doing some research to investigate whether R327 could be used to treat M. abscessus infection. And first off, we did some culture experiments where we successfully demonstrated that R327 could kill M. abscessus in culture. And then we did some important work where we investigated whether R327 could kill M. abscessus while they infected macrophages. Because in the human lung, M. abscessus infect macrophages, which is a type of immune cell. <clears throat> so inside these cells, the bacteria are protected from immune attack, but not only immune attack, Many antibiotics also cannot enter the cells and therefore don't reach M. abscessus. This is in fact is one of the reasons that a lot of antibiotics don't work against M. abscessus. They can't get to them to kill them. So we used human stem cell derived macrophages. We used these cells because they are physiologically very similar to macrophages that are found in the human lung. These cells are infected with M. abscessus and then treated with R327. So one or three days after treatment, live M. abscessus inside the cells were quantified by colony forming assay. And what we found was if you look at day one on the top right, we got a very nice dose response killing of M. abscessus inside the macrophages, which by three days had resulted in complete eradication in some of the groups. 
So R3-7 was extremely effective at killing intracellular M obsessors. There was no toxic effect on the macrophages and we saw a dose-dependent killing. And it, this importantly was also superior to clarithromycin positive control. After that success, we've moved on to mouse experiments. So we've done a pilot study where mice were infected in the lungs with MFCSS. They were treated with R327 nasally twice daily for five days. And then the levels of MFCSS in the lungs were quantified with coliniforming assay. This was a pilot study. We didn't optimize the dose and we didn't optimize the infection. Um, so we're very pleased with the result because no adverse events were observed in the mice while treating a lung infection. And what we found was that the R327 treatment significantly reduced M abscessus levels. And despite using unoptimized dose and delivery, the efficacy of R327 was only slightly inferior to that of the positive control. It has very, very similar effects. So to summarize that, M abscessus has emerged as one of the most important lung pathogens in cystic fibrosis. It's a major driver of disease progression. The pathogens drive an inflammatory response, which, which accelerates disease in cystic fibrosis. If you can control the infection, you can slow down disease development. And it's thought that 20% of patients with cystic fibrosis are infected with M abscessus. It's a contraindication for end stage lung transplantation. Advanced patients with cystic fibrosis often need a lung transplant to stay alive. If they have M abscessus infection, they're not allowed to get lung transplant. Current treatments are ineffective and toxic. So a treatment that can Eradicate M abscessus that is not toxic and is quickly effective would be a major step forward for these patients. So R327, there was no toxicity observed against treated human macrophages or infected mice. We demonstrated very good activity against intracellular M abscessus within human macrophages with complete eradication of infection achieved. This demonstrated that R327 was able to penetrate the cells and kill these bacteria inside the macrophages. And we also achieved proof of concept where we showed that killing of M abscessus infection in mice was, was possible following nasal delivery. So the summary for the three projects, for bacterial sinusitis, um, we have some very compelling data, which um, points us to start a phase one, two clinical trial, hopefully in the first half of next year. For H. pylori, we demonstrated very good killing of the bacteria, that further formulation work is required to improve delivery to the site of infection. And for M abscessus, proof of concept has been very clearly achieved and there's very compelling data to progress forward, hopefully towards a potential human study in the future. Thank you for your attention.